Mecca, or let us say the Muslim, they worship the early Muslims. They used to go and worship toward uh, Petra. I will play a little bit of a clip so we can understand what we are talking about. Uh, the one who came with this uh, theory, uh, he's a historian. His name is Dan Gibson, or Dane? Dan, Dan, sorry. Dan Gibson. Let us hear what you want to say. He has extensively researched the peoples and places of the ancient world before Islam. I first came to Arabia in my early 20s, and I've spent more than 30 years exploring every corner of this amazing part of the world, piecing together evidence for a radical new theory, which I believe will change our understanding of the past. Years of study have led me to the conclusion that Islam began somewhere other than where the conventional history suppose, and that in early Islamic writings there are clues and references that reveal the hidden truth about the Mecca mystery. Back in 2002, I had occasion to visit a conference on Nabataean studies organized here by the Al Hussein bin Talal University. During the conference, I had occasion to speak with leading archaeologists from Saudi Arabia and from Jordan. I asked them specifically about the archaeological record in Mecca. While not wishing to be named or quoted, they admitted that there was no archaeological record in Mecca before 800 AD. I had expected them to defend the opinion. Okay, just take a note. See, there is, there is reasons for things to be rejected. There is reason for things to be accepted, right? So I agree with this guy that Mecca is nothing. I mean, there is no record of it. This Mecca thing, it is nothing. Actually, just to confirm what this man is saying, regardless if I agree with him or not, later you will know how much I agree and how much I reject. Uh, a hundred years ago, just a hundred years ago, the Kaaba was nothing. If you see the pictures of the Kaaba, just a hundred years ago, not a thousand years ago, you will find this. Let me show you. This is before the oil. Look at this. Do you see what I see? A room. There's a bunch of columns around it. Made from little rocks. And a bunch of houses. Everything around it is dirt. There's nothing. It's just a room. And this room, if you read my books, you will find that this is now. I mean, this is 100 years ago. If you go a little bit back, you will see there is no roof for it. To the point that other cities, they come and they throw garbage from the top of the roof, because there's no roof, that they throw it from the top of the wall. To tell the people who worship in this place that our place is better. Look, your God cannot even stop the garbage. So, I agree with this man regarding Mecca have no roots. It's just a little tiny village. What happened then, when the oil started coming, then Mecca changed, became a business. And here you need to ask yourself, if the early Muslims, they believe in Mecca, why did it not even, I mean, they have, the Muslim, they say to you, we have palaces in Spain. Do you see the building we built in Spain? First of all, you did not build any building in Spain. Go and read Ibn Khaldun, you will find that the one who built is those who you brought from Syria or from Spain itself, the one you forced them to work for you. Arab don't know how to build. And the proof is in front of you. People of Yemen are not the Arab. And they are not even Arab. And even the Muslim, they claim, oh, the, the Yemeni, even the Quran claim clearly that the people of Yemen was occupied for a long time by the Ethiopian and then was occupied for a long time by the Jews. 
and then it was occupied by the Arab. All study show that those who live in Yemen, they don't even speak Arabic. So what happened to this Mecca? How it, why the Caliphate did not spend money to make Mecca look beautiful? I mean, if this is the most holy place, the one who is building palaces in Damascus, in Baghdad, in Spain, can't he build a palace? Little rocks around the Kaaba to make it clean, put tiles in the floor. This is just a hundred years ago. So, we go back to the video. This is a question you have to put in your note. As long as the Muslims, they reach all the way to China. Money was coming like rain. You know, invasion, the purpose of invasion is not really spread in Islam. The purpose of invasion is money. Money and slavery. This is a Hungary, slavery, money, empire. So, if they are already doing the, for the sake of Allah, and this is the most holy place for them, so why it was like this? That is a question no Muslim can answer. Now, we go back to the video of uh, Dan Gibson. And by the way, if you want to watch the video of Dan Gibson in full, because we will not play it in full, we will play just a section of it, you can see it in the, uh, in the information down the video there. That Mecca was a walled city with houses and gardens and public buildings and temples. They said, no, there was nothing like that there. Did you know that the name Mecca is mentioned only once in the whole Quran? True. Muslim scholars link other names with Mecca. Names such as the Forbidden Gathering Place, or the Holy House, or the Place of Becca, or Weeping. All of these terms are universally associated with Mecca today. Nevertheless, the Quran itself does not tell us in so many words that these all refer to Mecca. Muslim scholars see no reason to debate this. But in recent years, some historians have raised questions. They have noted that Mecca was a barren place and not located on the ancient caravan route. People have imagined that the caravans carried incense, spice, and other exotic goods. But according to recent research, by the time of Muhammad, the age of frankincense was now long over, and the Arabs engaged in a trade of leather and clothing, hardly items that could have sustained a large city that was described as the mother of all cities and the center of the trade route. Look at this map. Where do all of the trade routes intersect? There are three places in Northern Arabia that could be described as the center of the trade route. What is interesting is that Mecca was not even a stopping place because it was not even located on the caravan route. In this film, we will find out why there is a total lack of archaeology in Mecca from the time of the Prophet Muhammad. All right, so you can watch it to the end if you want. Uh, for me, I made a video before I rejected what he is saying, and I have my reasons. Because actually, I did not hear him speaking, I heard J. Smith, and J. Smith, he did not lay it out clear. So what J. Smith, he said, uh, that there is many old mosques, they are the direction of them toward Petra and it mentions some of them my response was well those most they used to be temples and the Muslims hijacked them which means they are not built by Muslims but then when I watched you know Dan Gibson he brought names of mosque which is really built by Muslims which mean after Islam supposedly not previous not something exists uh, 300 years before Muhammad or 500 years before, before Muhammad. So I rejected anything to be connected with Islam or, or Muhammad just because it is built by someone he is not supposed to be a Muslim. But hold on. But Islam is not, not, not a new religion. Islam is just a continue of a cult. You will see that the Muslim themselves, they admit, if you go in the Quran, you will see the Muslims, they admit that uh, the Kuffar, let us see the Quran, the Quran. Or the one who they call the Mushrikeen. I 
what Mushrikeen mean, mean? Those who associate intercessor with Allah. Chapter 2, verse number 105. And here you see right away a stupid mistake in the Quran, which does not make sense. You see the translation here is not really accurate. Let us find different translation. He used, instead of saying uh, people who associate, he said pagan. That's not true. Even if they are pagan, still the translation is not right. <coughs> we change the translation or the translator. <coughs> Look what happened. Chapter 2, verse 105 says, Neither those who believe among the people of the scripture, the Jews and the Christians, nor the Mushrikeen, nor the Mushrikeen, this is the word in Arabic in the Quran, Mushrikeen, between two bracket, the disbelievers of the oneness of Allah, idolaters, polytheists, pagan, but do you see here the, 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 the stupid verse in the Quran? Look what happened. The Muslim, they say for us first, that Christians and Jews, they used to worship Allah. Correct? They used to worship Allah. And they say Abraham worshiped Allah. Isa, he was supposed to Jesus worship Allah. Moses, he worshiped Allah. But look what happened. In this verse here, it says, neither neither those who became kuffar from the people of the book the quran is not calling them mushrikeen here is calling them people of the book nor the mushrikeen okay hold on <laughs> the people of the book if they became kuffar they disbelieve they disbelieve in what whatever they disbelieve still they are not mushrikeen take a note what mushrikeen mean between two bracket those who disbelieve in the oneness of God, the idolaters, the polytheist, and the pagan, the Christian or not. Otherwise, if we are the same as those who they are mushrikeen, the Quran should not divide us and say neither the Christians and the Jews or the mushrikeen. Are you getting my point? Like when I say, uh, <clears throat> let us say we are trying to study uh, ethnic. Uh, group. So we say uh, uh, the Indian, nor the Indian, nor the white people. If the Indian are white, we will not say nor the Indian, correct? Because they are the same. So when we separate between the Mushrikeen, which is supposedly between two bracket, those who disbelieve in the oneness of God, those who are adulterers, those who are polytheists, those who are pagan, they are not the same as the Christian and the Jews. So the Quran confirmed in this verse something very important that the Christians, the Jews are not al mushrikeen However, in different verses in the Quran, the Quran calls us mushrikeen And that is showing you that the one who wrote the Quran is an idiot because he contradicts himself. For if we are the mushrikeen here the verse is wrong. You should not say, nor the Mushrikeen, if the Christian and the Jews are the Mushrikeen. Remember here, it says already that those Christian Jews, they are the wrong one, supposedly. They disbelieve. <laughs> you know what I mean? A Muslim here, he cannot play the game, say, oh, he's talking about the good Christian who believe in Jesus. No, it says they, those are the, the one who disbelieve in Muhammad. So even the Quran, who speak negatively about the Christians in this verse, that they are people who disbelieve, and it, the Quran explained to us that those are, when you say, the second you say the, the, the people of the book, right away you mean to believe the Christians and the Jews. Immediately. Unless you name them by name. You say like Christian, uh, which is supportive word Nasara, or you say the word Jews, which is Yahud. So, the Quran here make differentiation between the Mushrikeen and the Christian and the Jews. Why we have, we are not the same? Because we don't worship the same God. The Mushrikeen is the one who believe in intercession of others with, to Allah. So they still they worship Allah. 
So Muhammad himself, he worshiped Allah, the God of the Arab before him, the God of many other nations around him before him. He is just a follow pagan, follow what was exist. So Muhammad, he wanna get close to the Christians in their belief. He wanna get closer to the Jews in their belief. What is the belief? There's one God. So Muhammad starts saying there's no, God don't have three daughters. And then when Muhammad, he moved to live between the Jews, he starts saying things negatively about Jesus. That Jesus is not the son of God, for this is what the Jews believe. So Muhammad, the confused man, he is between. Still, at the end of the day, he worship the God, his name is Allah. Regardless, he is talking to who? And those verses are very important. Now listen, Dan Gibson, he said that Mecca was not the main uh, place of worship. The Muslim don't pray to it. Actually, I can support what he say. Still, I will not go with him, but I want to show you some verses. And feel free to take notes, please, if you are a person who likes to study and, you know, uh, get educated. Some people here, they are just for entertainment. If you go to chapter of az chapter 43, verse number 31, look what the verse here is saying. I don't know if Dan Gibson, he knew about it. If somebody know the person, he can contact him. Also, they say, why it is not the Quran sent down to some leading men in either of the two cities? Hmm? Anyone understand what's happening here? Anyone understand what is the problem with this verse? Let me see in the text, you guys, if you are thinking with me. The one who is making the question is those who refuse Muhammad. What was the question? They are wondering how come, why the Quran was not sent down to some, this is a Muslim translation, not mine. This is the Muslim translation. Again, Muslim don't say to me, I'm, you know, you know them. What is the problem? Why this Quran was sent, not sent down to leading men or man in either of the two cities? Okay, hold on. Muslim, they say to us, Muhammad is a son of a great family. Muslim, they say to us that Muhammad father, Muhammad grandfather is the most high noble of Quraysh. The Muslim, they say to us that they are the most extreme important to the point even the grandfather of Muhammad is the one who do care of the Kaaba. Suddenly, this Quran sent to someone not from a great family. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are we listening, guys? This verse in the Quran, if anyone he can have a contact with Dan Gibson, send it to him as a gift from me to him. The Quran confirmed that the Quran was sent down not to someone. He is from a great family and not for someone from the two cities. What cities? You go right away and you read the interpretation, you will see the Muslim, they say to you, the city of Mecca and the city of at taif Let us go and see the interpretation. So the Muslim will not say we are making things up. Again, chapter 43, verse number 31. Give me a second. <clears throat> No, the website of the King of Jordan is not working, as usual. <laughs> I think the King of Jordan, he chose like $5 website host. This is how much he care for his profit. Uh, okay, let's see here.
we open Ibn Kathir. Um, here we go. This is Ibn Kathir. Even I prefer the other website because this website, the text is so small when you put it in the screen, it doesn't show really good. But anyway, you can open, maybe the admin, he can post for you the link. Again, this is Ibn Kathir, chapter 43, verse number 31. Why not the Quran sent down to some great men of the two towns? Meaning, why the Quran is not revealed to some man who is a great and uh, permanent in their eyes from the two towns, i.e. Mecca or at -Taif. What does verse confirm to us that the Quran was not revealed to someone from Mecca? Neither from at -Taif. And the proof of that, you see, what is the problem? The problem is a great man or from both? Because if the complaint is why the Quran was not revealed to a great man, then there's no need to say from the city of etc. Because he is from there already. Do you understand what I'm saying? People, do you understand what I'm saying? The Muslim confirm that the complaint is like why the Quran is not sent to someone, he have two options, or let us say two description. He's a great man, and he is one, he is from one of two cities, either Mecca or a Taif. So if Muhammad was from Mecca, then this verse is wrong. Because this verse should be changed, is why this Quran was not sent to someone, he is a great. But the Quran confirm that he is not great and he is not from Mecca. And this is by the way defeat all the lies of Muslim they give to us saying that Muhammad was the most honorable people they call him a person of honor, as sadiq al amin the trustworthy, the trustworthy. The guy even when he got married from Khadija he made the father of Khadija drunk in order to have Khadija. Khadija and Muhammad they made her father drunk and they changed his clothes and when he woke up in the morning she told him you married me to Muhammad he said I did not he said you did I did not you did I did not you did you were drunk so this verse confirmed that Muhammad is not respected man and this verse confirmed that Muhammad is not from the city of Mecca or at Taif so where is from if you go to different verse in the Quran and again this is the Muslim interpretation all right if you go to different verse in the Quran, you will see it says that Allah He sent this book to warn the people of the mother of the village and what is around it. What is the mother of the village? Muslim for sure they will say to you it's Mecca, but why it's not Petra? We just showed you a picture of Mecca. <laughs> You know, it's just what, this is the mother of the village. This is just a hundred years ago. How this one is the mother of the villages? Little tiny few houses. This is the mother of the villages. When the Muslim, they say villages, they mean cities. Cities, this is a city. Right? Obviously it's not. And this is a picture after we have cameras. So if this is not long time ago, how Mecca was in the time of Muhammad a piece of dust? This is the center of Mecca now. This is around the Kaaba. Those are the fancy houses. Look at this. Look at the Kaaba itself. So the Quran is saying clearly, we send you this book to warn people who around the mother of the cities. So where is the mother of the cities? 
So when Dan Gibson, he say, Petra, well, that makes sense. That is a city. That's a great city. Amazing city. Whoever built it is a genius. We cannot call the Mecca the mother of the cities. So when Dan Gibson, he come and he say, well, there is many things does not make sense with this cult, with this religion about the existence of Muhammad, where he was exist, he have tons of reasons to, uh, to accept. However, I have a problem with this. You see, in order to come from the city of Petra, if Muhammad is from the city of Petra, how you explain to me that he is so stupid? I know that this is not, you know, I mean, you cannot depend history on it. You cannot say history cannot be proven by saying a guy is so stupid. But I can come with something important. A person who is coming from civilization, he should know what civilization is. The Muslims, an Islamic book says, Muhammad, he used to clean his bum with the three rocks. Petra is a city where they have running water. Imagine, in the desert, they have running water. Muhammad is a person whose head is full of lies. Muhammad is a person who believe in stupid things when nobody believe in. Those are smart people. So. The first objection I have that Muhammad is from Petra, that this is an insult to Petra people. He cannot be from them. So it's possible that Muhammad was sent supposedly to people of Petra to fool them, not to the people of Mecca, but he is not from Petra. How we can prove that? If you go in the Quran, let us do this. <coughs> Uh, let us see. Um, There's many verses actually I want to show you, but I want to, I want to, uh, what verse we will show you. Read this verse with me. The first thing you see in the screen, it says, it was not fitting for the people of Medina, but Medina is not a name of a city. Medina is a word being city. <laughs> Medina is a word means city. This is, the, this is not a name. So it, it was not fitting for the people of the city and the Bedouin Arab of the neighborhood to refuse who? To follow Muhammad. Okay. So we have to differentiate between those who live in the city and those who are Arab. Those who live in the city, they are not the Arab. Are you, are you getting my point? People are getting my point. You see, because you are, we are using different account now, we have a low number of viewers. People do not know we are here. Invite your friends, please. We have only like seven, 800. It is not fitting 
it was not fitting for the people of Medina, which means the people of the city, and the Bedouin Arab, the Arab in the neighborhood. So those who they are in the city, they are not Arab. Because all the Arab are Bedouin anyway. All the Arab are Bedouin. The second you say the word Arab, you are saying actually Bedouin. Arab does not mean an ethnic. Arab is a word meaning people of the desert. I made a video about it. You can watch it. This is coming from the Aramaic language. Aram is a person who live in the high hills. Arab is any person who live in the desert. Actually, it means savage, mean, you know, people who live in the desert, they don't wash, they don't, you know, they don't have any civilization. So Arab is a word was used as an insult. Like if somebody want to insult you, he would say you are an Arab. Because you don't wash, you don't have civil life, you don't have a house, you know, you are just a person who live in the desert, there's no water. I'm not insulting the people, by the way, I'm just telling you how it is. So, the Arab people, supposedly I'm an Arab, uh, live in the desert, they move from place to place, they have their own tents, and then they will say to you that the Arab, they became people who live in the cities. That's what they say, right? Okay. But still, why you call them Arab then? The verse here differentiate between two groups, people who live in a city and people who they are the Arab. You will see here it's adding the word Bedouin. The word in, in the Arabic here, it doesn't say anything about Bedouin. It says Al-Arab. Those are the real Arab. And this is the word in front of us. You ask Muslims who are the Arab, they say to you, the Arab, uh, the Arab of the desert. <laughs> Isn't it Muhammad an Arab of the desert? Right? There is someone who want to debate me. His name is Mokaraji Jaraj. Well, he is an Indian Hindu. He debate me about what? Focus with me, please. Don't, guys, don't post things that have nothing to do with the topic. If you are interested in something else, you know, don't disturb us. I will, otherwise, I will disable the chat. I mean, that's it now that somebody want to debate me. Focus. We are sharing with, with you important information. Your brain in different place. So, the Arab are not the people of the city. Which city? They say to you, Medina, which city, Medina? There is no city, it's called Medina. Because this is a word mean city. Have you ever heard of somebody calling a city, city? The Muslims agree that Muhammad, he went to a city called Yathrib. Uh, okay. And Yathrib name changed to a Medina. Uh, but Medina means city. So Muhammad, he could not even find a name for it. <laughs> but because they are disconnected, with their own Quran, they could not explain it better than this way. It was not fitting to the people of Medina and the Bedouin Arab. Okay. But the Quran says we send you as a messenger to the mother of the cities and what is around it. Is that Mecca? Or this is city? Why the Quran did not mention the name of the city? No name. The Quran never mentioned who is Muhammad, who is his father, where Muhammad was born, which, which year. You see, the Muslim, they have video says, the Bible written by John. John who? Luke, Luke who? Mark, Mark who? Huh? Okay, here we go. The Quran given to you by Muhammad. Muhammad who? Not a single verse in the Quran says where Muhammad was born, where Muhammad was buried, who is the father of Muhammad and who is the mother of Muhammad? Nowhere. So, Dan Gibson, he have a lot of point, but for me, it doesn't make any difference. We will listen to him more a little bit, and I will tell you why it doesn't make any difference for me. Why descriptions of Mecca do not tally with the landscape and how an early Islamic civil war altered the truth about Islam. 
while Muslims all over the world believed that their holy city and their founding leaders all lived in Mecca in Saudi Arabia, Dan Gibson believes the evidence actually points elsewhere. During my studies of Arabian history, I've come across evidence that points not to Mecca, but to Northern Arabia as the founding place of Islam. Up until now, no one has ever questioned that Mecca is the holy city of Islam. Every Muslim believes that he should pray towards the black rock in Mecca. But years of study and countless trips to all parts of the Arabian Peninsula have led me to a radical new understanding of Islamic history. I believe that in the process of understanding Islamic history, a fundamental error has been made. It wasn't a deliberate falsehood. It was just a misunderstanding of what happened during the founding years of Islam. So later Islamic writers corrected what they thought was an error in earlier histories when it was actually the truth. Is it possible that over a billion people who follow the religion of Islam misunderstand how and where their religion began? And if so, what implications does this evidence have for the average Muslim who wants to follow the instructions of Muhammad, his prophet? We are going to have to examine a time in history and a setting that few of us understand. For centuries, the histories of the classical world and Middle East empires have been discussed, but little effort has been given to the history of Arabia. This ignorance is true not just of the West, but also of the Arabs themselves. The Prophet Muhammad was born in 570 AD, at a time and a place that few people today really know about. His grandfather and his father were Nabataean merchants, and in fact, Muhammad himself married a merchant woman. One day, Muhammad was meditating in a cave and an angel visited him. The angel taught him words of praise to Allah. Later, his wife convinced Muhammad that it really had been an angel and he was in fact called to be a prophet of God. During his lifetime, he had many visits from the same angel and each time there was a new revelation. These revelations from the whole of the lifetime of Muhammad become gathered together to what we know today as the Quran. Adel Ishemari studied Islam at the Islamic College in Kuwait. Over the years, he and Dan have formed a good friendship and have often found themselves drawn into deep discussion about faith and its history. كانت رسالة محمد هي أن في إله واحد وأن هو آخر الأنبياء الذي أرسلهم الله وهذا الشيء أغضب كثير من المتواجدين في مكة بسبب أنهم كانوا يعبدون آلهة أخرى وهي الأصنام كثير من الأصنام كان موجود هناك وكان يعبدونها. Okay, guys, we just receive a copyright audio from YouTube. I don't know what. I mean, we post the credit for the video, we post, etc., and we receive copyright audio. Can you believe it? Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Uh, we apologize the last broadcast, you know, we have to stop because we received a copyright claim and we are going to dispute it, we will see. Uh, and that is finished. 
we can go back to that topic later but anyway we give you enough reference for what we spoke about however you know somebody says finally Christian Prince agree with Jay Smith I agree with no one and I will tell you why the second you say that Muhammad was not Muhammad Mecca was not Mecca uh, Kaaba was not Kaaba the Muslim now will find a new excuse to get away from what Islam is about they will say well this is not the true Allah but Islam is good still you know they will find a way I mean it's a it's a sneaky cult so keep it as it is for me I prefer to keep it as it is regardless if it's true or not that the Kaaba is there or not uh, now we have a Muslim he made a comment <clears throat> from the previous chat and those comments are very you know normal from Muslims I will put it for you on the screen it's in Arabic but we will translate Uh, he said uh, speaking to Amelia saying who is the true God the Ab or Al Ibn the father or the son ha 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 you know when a Muslim he say a question and who is the true God the father or the son can I ask the same question who is the true God Allah or Muhammad you know because simply you Muslim you claim that you worship Allah but you obey Muhammad you don't obey Allah the excuse is whatever Muhammad he saved from Allah but the Quran says Muhammad is a sinner so how a sinner can be taken as God how you follow an order of a sinner man over an order of God the Quran says you do muta a hadith says don't do it no more which one you follow the hadith same time, a Muslim when he asks a question about who is the true God, is he asking read the question to be answered or he's just making fun? Obviously, he's trying to make fun. Because all Muslims, every single Muslim knew that we believe in one God. We don't believe in which one of them is a true God. That is very silly. When your God, he says, if I want to take a partner, I will take it from ourselves. That is silly. That is silly. Our God don't take partners. We don't believe there is partnership here. We believe in one God. So when a Muslim he come with a question, the question is not legitimate. It's just meant to make fun. Not really. Uh, to learn. You know, we support people who try to learn. No problem. At the same time, if we go in the Bible, we will see the following. The Muslim, they say to us, nowhere in the Bible, Jesus says, I'm God. You know, you know that, the story. If you go to John chapter four, 14, you will see the Messiah saying, clearly, that the one who see him, he see the Father. The one who know him, he know the Father. The one who spoke to him, he spoke the Father. And he and the Father is one. Now, no matter how many times you repeat the verses for the Muhammad, then they will say, we heard, we saw, we learned nothing. Right? We heard nothing. We learn nothing. You answer nothing. Read carefully with me. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father houses a uh, house are many uh, mansions this is metaphorically if you were not so would have told you I go prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will become I will come again and receive you myself that when I am there you may also and where I go you know and the way you know one of the disciple he is not sure what the messiah he meant so he said to him his name is thomas lord and you will see here the thomas calling him god lord we do not know where you go where are you going and how we can know the way jesus said 
I am the way, the truth, the life. Jesus, in one sentence, he said that no salvation but by him. He said he is the truth, which means his God. Even the Muslim, they copy the name of Jesus or attribute of Jesus, and they say Allah is Al-Haq. Muhammad, he copied all the attribute of Jesus. The description of Jesus, claiming that this is Allah. The second you say, no, no Muslim can say I am Al-Haq. Muhammad himself cannot say that, supposedly. But as you see, Jesus says, I am the truth, I am Al-Haq. I am the life, which means all life is coming from me. No one come to the Father except through me. Now, Muslim will say, okay, he is the truth, he is the life, but yet you have to go to the Father. All right. Then he continue. You see here the title says, the Father revealed. If you know me, you would know my Father also. So Jesus right away stating clearly, by knowing him, you know God. God whom? The second is, every, every, every second we say the word Father, we are speaking about God the Father. The one who know me, he know the Father. That's wonderful. And from you know him and have seen him. From now, you, you, know, you, you know him and you see him. Okay. So by seeing Jesus, you saw the Father. By knowing Jesus, you know the Father. And the Muslim, he says, where Jesus says, I'm God. Imagine I'm saying to you, by seeing me, you see God. By knowing me, you know God. And yet I did not say to you, who am I? Do you see the false claims of the Muslims? They played like they played dumb, they like we heard nothing. Right? Like he heard nothing at all. Yeah. Is my voice coming, guys? Am I heard? No? Hello? Am I heard now? All right, wonderful. Okay. All right. I don't know, I'm confused in the chat. So if you know the Father, you know Jesus. If you know Jesus, you know the Father. If you speak to Jesus, you spoke to the Father. If you see Jesus, you've seen the Father. Yet the Muslim, they say there's nowhere Jesus, he said. I am God. And yet the Muslim will ask, which one is God, the true God, the Father or the Son? Which one? Can you tell me which one? My friend, the one who saw me, he saw the Father. The one who met me, he met the Father. The one who spoke to me, he spoke to the Father. Is it clear that Jesus says that me and the Father is one? Actually, Jesus, he will say it to you. Read carefully with me. After Jesus, he said what he said, that the one who know me, he know the Father, and also, from now on, you know him, and you've seen him. 
That was not enough. Philip, he said. First it was Thomas, and now Philip, he said. Lord, show us the Father, and that is sufficient for us. Show us the Father. Show us God. That is what Philip is asking for. Look what Jesus said. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. Is my internet working, guys? I thought it was YouTube who was like stopping my broadcast first, but it was internet. Is the internet running fine? Do you see the screen? All right. So how can, read carefully. Have you ever been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? Remember what Philip is asking. He want to see God the Father. He already saw Jesus. He's talking to Jesus. Jesus is with him all this time. But he's saying, okay, what, you know what? Can you show us the Father? And that's it. That is sufficient for us. So the, the, the disciples, they have hunger to know. That is sufficient. What Jesus' answer was. He who has seen me has seen the Father. Can Muhammad say the one who saw me, he saw Allah? No, because the second he said that, he claimed that to be Allah. He who has seen me, he saw the Father. So how can you say, show me the Father? Do you see it? How you can say, show me the Father? Your question is not right. For I am with you. You are seeing me. So how you question such a question? And now here we see that those questions are meant for a reason. So 2,000 years after, when a liar he come, his name is Muhammad, he want to lie about who is Jesus. Those questions are meant to refute him. To refute every liar about who is Jesus. What do you want more? And then Jesus continue to make it more clear. The Muslim, we ask them, who is Allah? They say, Allah is one. Look what Jesus said. Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? That means we don't believe in three gods. I am in the Father and the Father in me. So how clear we can make it for those who try to make fun and a question about Jesus. And remember, you know, we don't believe in Jesus that he is who he is just because he said this, because I can say that too. I can say the one who saw me, he saw God. I can say the, the God is in me, I am in God. I can say whatever I want. But Jesus, he did what nobody can do, save God. The Muslim, they question how Jesus can be God, and they say to you, he, know not, he do not know the judgment day, which is a false, you know, analogy, or let us say, question. Because Jesus, in the same chapter, he said, when those things happen, the judgment day will happen. So Jesus knew what will happen in the future. He do not know the judgment. He knew, or what he is saying, that my Father is going to reveal that day based on your sin. Remember, when we speak about Sodom and Gomorrah, do you remember the conversation which happened there before the destruction of the city? If there's only 10, only 10 righteous people, the city will not be destroyed. Only 10. What does that mean? 
In Christianity, it's not a preset date as much it is how fast we corrupt ourselves. The more we, we walk for corruption, the faster we walk for corruption, destruction will come. That is judgment day. We don't believe in a predestiny. About God, he know when the day will be. Well, Jesus is saying that my father, he is the one who revealed. And that's why Jesus, he called him the father. You see, when the word father in the Aramaic, in the Hebrew, in all traditions, is the one who is the head of the house. He is the head. So that is the charge of the father. But Jesus said it clearly that all judgment is given to the son. So the father will reveal the day, the son will do the day. Who is going to be the judge in the judgment day? Jesus. Even in the cult of Islam, it says that Jesus will be Hakam al Muqsitan. Any Muslim question? Any Muslim have a question? Anyone? Still the Muslim, they will say, well, you know, where Jesus says, I'm God. Brother and sister, you will not find one thing of in the Bible, it said, it said, I am God, worship me. Who said that? Zach and Naik. Can you really believe that Zach and Naik never saw this chapter as an example, which one of many chapters Jesus saying clearly is God? Do you really believe that this guy who is attacking Christianity 24 hours, seven days a week. He never saw those verses? Is that possible? Is it possible that all those people who attack Christianity, they never saw those verses? So look what they will do. They will say the Bible is corrupted. And then we will jump to different story now. The second the Muslim, he said the Bible is corrupted, he just admitted that Islam is false. Why? Because the Quran says, مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ He confirming what is between his hand. And not only that, according to Islam, the Bible is sent by Allah. All the verses you see in front of you with the numbers, you can check them out. It says, believing in what is between your hands. Lima ma'akum, between your hands or what is with them, depending on the verse. Like in chapter two, verse 41, it says to what is with you. I believe in what is with you. Chapter 289, in what is with you. In chapter 291, what is with them. And in chapter 2, verse number 97, to what is between his hands. The Muslim's game is, oh, you don't speak Arabic. Well, I am an Arab. Obviously, I'm an Arab who don't speak Arabic. Even the Muslim, they have a, uh, they have a video saying, Christian friends do not know how to read Quran. A boy from Pakistan, he is saying Christian prince do not know how to read Quran. وَلَمَّ جَاءَهُمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَهُمْ Believing in what we have in their hand. نَزَّلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ He sent you that, you know, this is all the same sentence. وَمُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ بَيْنَ يَدَيْ مِنَ التَّورَاتِ etc. Chapter 3 verse number 81. The same story. مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَكُمْ If you read the Muslim translation, you will see how hilarious it is. Look, 
This is the Muslim translation saying, confirming what is with you. What is with you? So how the Muslim, they say that our book is corrupted. Who is confirming what is with us? Allah confirming that those who are Muslims, they are accepting what is with you. And the story continue. Chapter 4, verse number 47. Chapter 5, verse 45. For sure, every verse speak about different prophet. But there's prophets speaking clearly about Muhammad confirming what is between our hands. Chapter 5, verse number 48. And we send the scriptures in truth. Confirming the scriptures came before it. This is the translation. In Arabic, it doesn't say that. It says, confirming what is between your hands. Literally. And this is the Arabic. Anyone who speaks Arabic? Actually, you can, just to show you how Muslim they lie in their translation, you can do this. You can copy hmm, this section here. And you can take it to Google Translation and paste. And you will see immediately the word between his hands will appear. And then the question will be, why the Muslim they took off the word between his hands? Why it's not in the translation? For this, for this Arabic text is troubling for them. Because if they believe, if Muhammad believe in what is between their hands, how the Muslim data they can say the Bible is corrupt? This is Google Translation. I copy the words exactly as it is from the Quran. وأنزلنا إليك الكتاب بالحق مصدقا لما بين يديه من الكتاب. What the translation of Google saying? And we have sent down to you the book in truth, certifying the book is between his hand. So the question is, why the word or the sentence between his hands it disappear from the Islamic translation? What's wrong with, the, with what's wrong with Allah saying between His hands? Why the Muslim they don't want to use that? What is written in the Quran? Have you ever heard of somebody? You see, the Muslim they say we will not accept corruption of our book. Well, isn't it, this is corruption? If the Quran is saying between His hand, what is between their hands? Why you are saying? Something else, the word hand disappear between disappear. What appear is confirming what they have or what sent. Because what is between their hands is something physical in the present, in the moment of Muhammad speaking. What sent before, it can be sent before, you know, that doesn't mention it's now confirming. It doesn't mean that he is confirming something he have now. So making the statement confirming what is between his hands will make no question, additional question needed, is this is a book which is given in the time of Jesus, and this is what Muhammad he meant, or a book which is the Christian they have in the time of Muhammad, according to this translation, it is in the time of Muhammad. And this is why the Muslim, they will not Give the correct translation. <clears throat> and the same for all the verses. As an example, not necessarily. I mean, there's tons of verses. Chapter 3, verse number thir uh, 3. Look what the Muslim translation. Confirming what went before it. What went before it? Is that really what the Quran is saying? No. I will copy in the front of your eyes again. Here we go. This is a chapter 3, verse number 3. 
even it mentioned the Torah and the Injil. Copy. Take the Google translation in front of your eyes. Does it say the word between his hands or not? Let us paste in front of your eyes. Live translation. He sent down to you the book of a truth confirming what was between his hands. Do you see it? No, we can show an endless number of those verses, you know. But in the Muslim translation, the word between disappear, his hand disappear. Don't think this is a mistake. It's done for a reason. They are deceivers. They knew if they mention this, then you will know that there is no base of the statement that, oh, the Bible is corrupted. When Muhammad, he said to the Jews, I remember once, I was, you know, talking to a Muslim, you know, I spoke to tens of thousands of them. And I said to him, your prophet, he took an oath on the Torah. <clears throat> Why he took an oath? Let me get the hadith. He said, well, the prophet, he's trying to be nice to the Jews. Can you believe it? The prophet, he is trying to be nice to the Jews. He said, I believe in your Torah. The question is very simple. If the Torah is corrupt, then how your prophet, he took an oath in the Torah, saying it clearly, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. He said, the prophet is being nice to the Jew. So he admitted that his prophet is a liar. He believe in it, lying, not a truthful. So this is what Muslims they do when they try to fix a solution. Like if somebody, you go to the eye doctor to make you see and he make you blind. So instead of fixing it, now they damage more their prophet. Look what Muhammad said. They were asking him about a woman she committed adultery and the story there's more report about the story that a, a man he put his fingers over the statement in the Torah where it says stone her or stone the adulteress that is what the corruption according to the hadith they try to hide what is written in the Torah but the Torah never changed it says clearly that the person he put his fingers there There's a huge difference between you are sitting next to me and I don't want you to read something so I put my fingers there and I change what is written there. And here he will go, Muhammad, he said to the Jews, bring me the Torah and he took a cushion and he placed it, he is treating the Torah with a lot of respect. He placed a cushion for the messenger of Allah who sat on it and said, bring the Torah. It was then brought. Then he would draw the cushion from underneath of him. Look what Muhammad is doing. I mean, this is a book of the devil now, but Muhammad is taking the cushion from underneath of him, sitting on the floor, which is not comfortable, as respect to the Torah. And he put the Torah in the top of it. And he said, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. So what Muhammad he believe? Muhammad, he agreed that he believed in the God of the Jews and he believed in the book of the Jews, which is between his hands. <laughs> so if the, if the Torah is corrupt, if the Injil is corrupt, Muhammad, he swear by what? He say, I believe in thee as what? And here we have another question. If Muhammad, he say to the Jews, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee, so who is Allah? Muhammad as a hypocrite man, when he is in front of the Arab pagans, like his family, 
He say he believe in Allah. He praise Allah al Uzza wa Manat. This is why Salman Rushdie wrote a book. It's called the Satanic Verses, because Muslims they claim that those verses is not from Allah. Those are from Satan. The fact Muhammad was worshiping what the Arab worshiping before him. But in the, that moment, he was trying to please his tribe. So in front of the Jews, he's a Jew. With the Christian, he believe in Jesus. With the Arab, he believe in Allah. And all of them, they refuse him. And this while later, he became so aggressive with them. In the beginning, he tried to fool them. This is why in the Quran says that Muhammad, he promised everybody to go to heaven. The Christian, the Jews, even the Sabian, because Sabian was the very popular religion. Actually, Sabian was the biggest religion in the Middle East before Christianity. To the point, the Sabian themselves, they believe that the Pharaoh himself is a Sabian. The temple of Al Makkah, which is in Yemen, is a Sabian, the Moon God Temple. The Sabian simply they believe in stars, and those stars have ranks, and they are creators. So look what Muhammad did. In the Ladina Amen, who Ladina had the one Nasara was Sabian, a woman Amen, a Billahi, a Yom Akhir, etc. Those they have no worry and no no fear, they will go to heaven. Translation, chapter 2, verse number 62. Those who believe in the Quran and those who believe in the follow who follow Jewish scriptures and those who they are Christians and the Sabian, they have no fear they will go to heaven. Now, question let us say, for the sake of argument, the God of the Quran is the same as the God of the Christian and the Jews, just for the sake of argument, which is not true. How the Sabian join us. The Sabi and they are going to go to heaven worshiping which God? In case you do not know what the Sabi and believe, the Sabi and believe that Adonai, the God of the Jew, is the devil. In their book, it's called Kenza Rabba. There's Kenza Rabba left, Kenza Rabba right. Let me see if I can. I suppose I will make a short video. For how long we are alive? See, we have only, uh, we don't have a big number now. I don't know why people, they come, like, I mean, just we change the account, people, they don't come here now. I mean, <laughs> all right. So, in the book of Kenzara, but let me, let me try to find it in the internet. Actually, I have it. Okay, let's see if this will work. All right, here we go. This is the book of Kenza Rabba. Let us put it for you in the screen. This is Kenza Rabba right. Kenza Rabba right means from the right, you know. It's a book, have two sides, right and left. So this is Kenza Rabba right. Al-Kanzu Al-Azim, Al-Kitab Al-Muqaddas Al-Sabi'ah, etc. So this is the holy book of the Sabia. Actually, if you read it, you will find that it is exactly as the Quran. It is exactly written in Arab The same as the rap, you know? And you will see how much similarity between the Quran and Muhammad. Look with me. The first you see in the first chapter, at tawheed tawheed In the name of Al-Hayy, this is one of the names of Allah, Al-Hayy al, al azim 
but let's make it a little bit bigger. All those are the names where Muhammad he had them in the Quran for Allah. What is this? This is the Quran. The writing, the rap, the word. وأمامه الملائكة ماثلون بأطمئة سترى بالقول ساجدين خاشعين شاكرين مسجين هو الذي you notice is even the same as the Quran شاكرين ساجدين مسجين رب you know when there is a historian he said that the first Quran was not written in Arabic it was Aramaic. I believe strongly he's right. And this is a translation for the Aramaic, which is very close to the Arabic. Their God have the same thing with, with, with Allah. The Quran promised those people to go to heaven with Allah. If you go to the Muslim website and article, they will say those people, they worship stars. They worship something called al -Atharyun. You know, they believe in the same thing. You know, they have a lot of share belief. Maybe I should make like a special study about this. Uh, religion you know so people can learn more but the the thing is that those people they believe the Jews and the God of the Jews is their enemy they call Adonai the devil and they make fun of the Jews because the devil Adonai told them to do circumcision but Muhammad he adopted what the God of the Jews Ask the Jews to do circumcision. So how Muhammad, he approved those people to go to heaven. And you will notice something here very funny. Ya khaliqu hayba lazuwa, Jibra'il rasul. They have Jibra'il. They have who? They have Jibra'il. How Jibrail became here? How Jibrail end here? The God of the stars. You have a Jibrail? Is that a name or a title? It's a title. It's not a name. Read with me and laugh, just to show you an example. Let me let me zoom in more. Guys, I will show you the Quran and I will show you this. Qala Malikun Nurus Sami, the angel of light, the high, he said, Fakana Kullu Shay, and everything was created. Say, be, and it was. <laughs> Look, this is Allah. Nazara Bathahil, Bathahil is Allah, is the God. Farafa as Sama wa Basat al Ard. Stop. Let me highlight so those people who do not know Arabic. How many people they speak Arabic in the chat? 
Guys, don't make me disable the chat. Please, admin, anyone he start insulting, just block him. Don't waste your time. I don't want to see people fighting. Focus with me. We are here to teach you not to do kids talk. If you are here just to know, just ignore even the Muslims if they are saying something annoying. Listen, listen carefully, my friend. Listen. I'm not here to spend half of my day wasting my time. I even turn my heater, which would make me very cold, so the noise will not come in the microphone. So look what happened here. قَالَ مَلِكُ النُّورُ السَّامِ قَوْلَهُ فَكَانَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ They worship creatures or creators. They are supposed to be an angel. Malak is a form of an angel who control, have authority. He's God. And he said, be and everything was. And then, Bethahil, which is a name of one of those high authority angels which they worship, he lift up the sky but this is what the Quran says exactly and I will show you the verses and he called the angels of fire and this is exactly what the Quran is saying. So he gave the sun its light. Diya, which is, uh, you know, like uh, shiny. And he gave the moon a little less light. So, and then he make a, 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 like an orbit or let us say a sanction for it. Let us go to the Quran. I want you to focus with me, especially those who speak Arabic. Does the Quran say exactly the same? Let us check. Chapter 55, verse number 7. Was Sama And he put the balance. Read it. In different place, it says. Don't you see how Allah, he has made the subjects to you men and that on earth? And then he say, he withhold the sky and between to bracket the rain. That's not true. It doesn't say rain. From filling in earth. He is the one who hold the sky from filling in earth. Let's go back. Who is the one who hold the sky from filling in the earth? A God, his name is Bethahil. Do you see it? فَرَفَعَ <laughs> السَّمَاءِ Second part of the sentence وَبَسَطَ الْأَرْضِ Let us check it out in the Quran بَسَطَ الْأَرْضِ The Quran say exactly the same thing بِسَاطِ is a carpet Chapter 71, verse 19. It's Allah who made the earth for you a carpet. Besought, the same exact word 
in Kenza Rabba book. Do you see it? The same exactly. And it's Allah is the one who made for you the earth as a carpet. He is not only using the meaning, he is using the, the, the word. Look. <coughs> My throat is dry, so I apologize. Bisat. وَجَعَلَ لَكُمْ الْأَرْضُ بِسَاطًا Okay. وَبَسَطَ الْأَرْضُ He made the earth for you, Karbid. And then he said, الشَّمْسُ ضِيَاءً Let us highlight. I cannot copy here because this is like a kind of a PDF file. الشَّمْسُ ضِيَاءً Okay. Let us see. Does the Quran say the same? Let us check. Unbelievable. وهو الذي جعل الشمس ضياء والقمر نورا exactly the same word by word. هو الذي جعل الشمس ضياء read it والقمر نورا they are they use the word بهاء instead of نورا it's the same word. but actually بهاء is is better is more accurate. الشمس ضياء let me zoom in. Take a screenshot, and now I will show you the other word. Even if you don't speak Arabic. Now we go to the other word. Exactly the same word. Do you see it? But those people are pagan. وَوَهَبَ الْقَمَرَ بَهَا And notice here the book is the same as the Quran. It ends with the same way of music, the sound. ضِيَا بَهَا سَنَا Any comment from Muslims? Yeah, I don't share those things because this is like for somebody when I go deep, you know, in the knowledge. Uh, most of people, they don't, I mean, most of the time we focus in basics just to fight the stupidity of Islam, you know. But this is like for somebody want to study deeper. And that's why I don't go farther, farther in the, in the, in our teaching because this is very complicated and at the same time how many people of you speak Arabic and the Muslim they cannot say they are copying them because Kanza Rabba book is exists before Islam and not only that the hadith says that people they believe that Muhammad is a Sabi'i he is from them he's one of them Actually, you can go right now and search in YouTube, but I'm going to, to play it for you, otherwise YouTube will give me a strike again. I just got one, as you know. Search how the Sabi and they do abolition. It's exactly as Muslim they do abolition today. Exactly. In additional time, this is new for the Sabian, they started claiming that John the Baptist is one of them. This is why you will see here in the beginning, you will see this symbolic. This is go back to John the Baptist supposedly. But obviously it's not true. Who is the God who will light the world? What his name? Bethahil. Bethahil, he is going to enlighten the world. Question to Muhammad. Do Muhammad believe, those who believe, that a God, his name is Bethahil, he will lighten the world or Allah? The Muslim, they will say, we never heard such a name, there's no way. So how does Sabi and they will go to heaven?
But a heel is the one who lift up the sky. But a heel is the one who created the sun, he gave it light. But a heel is the one who created the moon and gave it its own shine. Any Muslim we have in the comment? A Muslim, he posted a message before saying, Christian Prince, how much donation you made in the last 24 hours? I think I made $15. Are you happy now? There's a three new subscribers in the last 48 hours, I think. Total of $15. Are you happy? You know, uh, better you want to take time to approve a donation. Like, you know, even if you subscribe now, it's going to take maybe two days. But anyway, so the Muslim, this is what he's worried about. So all the time I spend, I am a man, I'm not a kid. I'm a person of degrees. Do you think my time is worth fifteen your fifteen dollars? But because they cannot refute me, they cannot answer me. They come with such a claim. Let us say I get fifteen million dollars. So still, you can't refute me. What does it have to do with this? So they try always to make you lose a credit, supposedly, if you are like, you know, okay. So, I mean, I'm showing reference, my friend. We don't even have donation in YouTube. They thought if we they stop donation in YouTube, I will not come and make videos as before, right? I make more videos now. And, you know, thanks, thank God, you know, the Christian, they support me. Why not? Are you upset? You can support me too. I'm teaching you for free. Free education. Nobody here have to pay a penny. I'm not like your prophet who said, if you want to see the prophet in a private consultation, you have to get, you, you have to pay him. And the Muslim, they say, this is charity. <laughs> charity? What about the private consultation too is a charity? Have you ever heard of a prophet? He will not accept to talk to you in a private unless you pay him first. Chapter 58, verse 12. What is this? Or who you believe when you consult the messenger in private, spend something in charity before your private conversation. So I have to give Muhammad money. And supposedly, Muhammad, he will give it to the poor man. Here we go. You come here. You call me names. You attend the chat. Uh, you answer me. I talk to you. And you don't pay a penny. I'm better than your profit. Free. It's totally for free. Your prophet will not talk to you in private. Imagine Jesus, he will not talk to you unless you pay him first. You see the Muslims, they attack Paul. Okay, Paul. Did Paul get paid for private consultation? Did Paul make verses saying any woman she want to give herself to Paul? Did Paul make a verse saying, oh, you know, whoever, you know, if we attack somebody, we have to give the fifth of the booty? He is not a thief. He is not a criminal. He encouraged peace and love. And he got nothing of it except he himself lost his life. The Muslim, they will say to you, do you know Paul? He says, if my lies, so he's admitting that he's lying. The Quran say the same as Paul, yeah, he did. That the Muslims the, the been accused, Muhammad been accused to be a liar. And Muhammad said to them, If I'm lying, my lies. 
Tons of things in the Quran is copied from Paul, not even from anyone. As an example, do you know what Paul he said about gambling? What go, what what Paul he said about drinking? What Paul he said about fornication? Read, read and see what Muhammad he steal from Paul, all over. <coughs> Chapter five, verse number ninety. Is it? This is what Paul he said. Chapter five, verse number three. Where is your God? And actually, chapter 5, verse number 3 is one of the most hilarious verses in the Quran. Why? Because the Quran here says, Today, today, this day, read carefully and love. This day have those who reject the faith, etc. And this day I have perfected your religion for you, completed my favor upon you, and have chosen Islam for you as a religion. But hold on. There's hundreds and thousands of verses after that. So if today this verse is where Islam became perfect, if this day is the verse where it says, I perfected Islam for you, who is talking Allah? So why Allah keeps sending verses? Are we listening people? Imagine, guys, I say to you, like I'm writing my book, and now I've, this should be the end of the book. Do we agree? This is somebody making a final statement at the end. Like Jesus in the cross, what he said. Can somebody remind me what Jesus said in the cross? The last statement Jesus, he said. Who remember? Help my memory. What Jesus said in the cross. The last statement. I know the sound takes some time for you to arrive. So when you receive it, I want you to tell me what the last thing Jesus, it's completed, it's finished. Completed. That is his mission. So Allah is saying to the Muslims, it is finished, it's completed, it's perfected, and yet he keep talking after that, sending more Quran. This verse actually proving that Islam and Quran is a corrupt book, because based on this verse, every single verse came after it is a fraud. You see, forget about being Muslim, being a Christian, just use your logic, be honest. This verse should not be here. If the Muslim they say, oh, this is something Muhammad, he said at the end, and we put it here, it's mean you corrupted the book. Look what the Quran says about changing the location of the words. Actually, this is the one the Muslim they use against us, supposedly. Chapter 4, verse number 46. Chapter 5, verse number 13. Saying clearly that those who change the location, who corrupt the words by changing the location, the right places. Do you see it? They change it from their right places. Allah curse them. We curse them. What they did, they changed the words from their location. So if the Muslim they will say to us, this verse was the last one, well, you are cursed by Allah. <laughs> Isn't this religion hilarious?
isn't it? There is something wrong here. This is not right. Any Muslim have a comment? Did we learn something good? Anyway, we will not keep you longer. Thank you very much for listening. Even though in this channel we don't have too many viewers now, I don't know why. I mean, this one is like four time number. The, the, the Christian Prince, I have only 35,000. This is way bigger as subscribers. Still, we have only 567. I think this one is censored by YouTube, maybe, so they don't people don't get notification. Doesn't make sense. Right? So anyway, the information we share with you, please help your friends learn, translate, add subtitle to your language. If the video is long, you can cut pieces. As an example, this last piece now, we, we, we ask this question. If the Quran says the one who changed the location of verses, Allah curse him. He's a false believer. He corrupt the book. So how this verse is here? Who put it there? You can cut this part, make it a video by itself. Two minute video. Actually, I encourage you to do that better than long videos. Cut a topic and make a short video. This way more people can see it. For me, it's impossible to make a short video. And even if I try, I could not because the information will come. It's like the second you open a door, it's like you have a leak in a, in a, from the roof of uh, water and then the door was closed and then you open the door and then everything will come out so the second we start talking about topic other information will come and the other information will come from here and there and you will find yourself you cannot stop unless you finish the whole image so it's very hard for me to do it but maybe you can help and you can cut the videos and make them shorter so those who need to learn they can learn all right and again the Muslims who is uh, talking about us getting support. The Lord is our provider. And if you are jealous, that's your business. And as you see here, we don't go live only for those who uh, support us. It's for free for everybody. Those who donate, those who don't donate. And I give my books for free. You are talking about we receive donation. I gave my book for free to the biggest Islamic country in the world, Indonesia, to the Russian, to the Bosnian, Serbian, Croatian, to the Albanian, to the Polish. Which language is more? I gave for free. Russian, we mentioned Russian, right? I mean, and yet a Muslim, he will come, he says, he, he, he will make you believe that, oh, those guys, they got donation, brother. You're a prophet, he don't stop begging for money. You know, at least people here, they, you know, they, they, if they want to help, they can help. But your God, he make it a, a must and go to go to heaven. Have you ever heard of a God? He says, I want a loan. If you remember when Mimi, he finished the debate with, with, the, with David Wood. In less than four hours after, he make a video with uh, his girlfriend. Aridawa and said, He starts singing it too. Go watch the video. Who can give Allah a loan? Allah need a loan? Have you ever heard of a God? What if Muhammad he heard about Patreon? He will make a chapter, he says. Go to battle you. Please give Allah a loan. And if you don't give him a loan, he will blow in you and make you like a balloon. This is your God. This is God. I mean, he is the one who created the whole earth and heaven. He don't he is begging for money. Can't he tell Muhammad, hey, go there behind that mountain? There's a rock I made for you. It's a big rock of gold. 
This is not supposed to Muhammad. This is God himself talking. And not only that, Allah will give you interest. Double interest to your credit. Allah will open an account for you in the heaven. You give him money. You bribe God. You cannot bribe God in Christianity. So when a Muslim, he speak about money. You are a follower of the money God, Muhammad. Qardan Hassanan, mortgage. And look, it's all over the Quran. It's all over the Quran, Allah is begging for money. <clears throat> Chapter 57, verse number 11, as an example. Who is that he will loan Allah a beautiful loan? Allah, did you try the employment center? I have a good news for you. Soon in USA, they will give $2,000 because of Corona to every citizen. Are you a citizen? I hope he's not, he's a citizen. Hmm? <laughs> so they cannot refute us. They try to make you go down. Sometimes they say, uh, uh, this guy, he used like, you know, uh, they attack us, all of us. He used a vulgar language. I mean, the vulgar language, you are following Allah and Muhammad, the most filthy language ever. And we have a bad language because we are caught in your prophet. If I'm talking about the Bible, I will not. If you remember, there's a hadith where Muhammad, he said to the women, give it charity, otherwise you will end in hell. <clears throat> Give a charity. Let us see where is the hadith. This is one of them, but I want to show you where he. They start giving him his their rings. <laughs> their earring. I don't want to give you a headache moving the screen. Let us turn it off a little bit. Anyway, he told the women, you are going to go to hell. So give it charity. And right away, Bilal, he opened his dress and they start putting their rings and their earrings. So now they will go to heaven if they give their rings. If they are bad anyway. <laughs> Where is the hadith? Hold on. I have the hadith, but I want the one where they start giving their rings. I mean, it's all over in front of me. Let us try something else. See, all those hadith are saying the same. He is asking them to give charity. To who? To him. He is the charity receiver. But I want to find the hadith where they start giving their earring and their rings. Anyway, maybe you can find it. And even Muhammad, he affect the poor with those people. There is a story here about a, a woman, she is very poor. And Muhammad wanted to look good. He says, oh, no, I don't accept your donation because she have her, her donation is nothing. Uh, Here 
Here we go. I found it. I found it. The Muslim, they will say it is, it is weak. It is not. Sahih. And this is the reference. Look what it says. I attended the prayer of Allah Messenger, etc. And then he starts saying in the in the prayer, after the uh, you know the prayer, he said to the women uh, the following. He went away to the women, and Bilal was with him. He commanded them to fear Allah and to exhort them and remind them. He prays and for uh, glorifying Allah, and he urged them to obey Allah then said give a charity for most of you are the fuel of hell imagine you have a, a hundred women in front of you in a room and you say to them give a charity for most of you are the hell the, the fuel of hellfire and those women like what we will be burning hellfire so we're a prophet if we give a charity what would happen obviously charity will solve the problem that's why you're saying give a charity a lowly woman, she said, and she have a dark cheek, said, she's a bad woman. Why? Why, messenger of Allah? He said, you complain a great deal and you are ungrateful to your husband. And you know, the story is there. And then they start taking off their necklace, earring, rings, throwing them into Bilal, garment, and give them in charity. I want to go to Las Vegas, all those rich women, I will stand in the front of the casino and I will say to them, you women, rich women, the one you came from the limousine, give a charity. I saw you in my dream. You will go to hellfire. And right away she started giving me her rings. I mean, what a business. What a business. And now you ask yourself a question. Okay, those women, they gave their rings and their earrings. Are they going to go to heaven now? Are you serious? So if I give Allah little money or jewelries, he, that's it, you go to heaven. Isn't it obvious this is in a scam? And here you see that how Muhammad is abusing his slave, Bilal. Bilal is, became a partner in the scam, but he have no choice, he's asleep. Bilal is the one, the poor Bilal, he cannot even take one penny from this money Muhammad is collecting. Muslim women, I am an Arab. I have connection to Allah. Give your earring and your rings and your bracelet. Yeah, that one there, uh-huh, don't hide it, uh-huh. Yeah, the one he gave it to you, your husband. I mean, those poor women, all their security is the little jewelries they have in their life. The husband, he can divorce her. The husband, he can throw her. This is her, this is her uh, security. And now she gave it to Muhammad. And look, he is not talking to one. All of them, they start giving their rings and their earrings. He did not say, oh, don't uh, give everything, just a... Uh, uh, give us, yeah, your rings, uh -huh, okay. Is it the man is in charge of the women? What about you ask the man to pay? Oh, he took the money, the, the, the money of the men too. There's a guy, he promised him a corner lot in heaven. He took his farm. Who of you have a farm? Want to give it to Muhammad? You exchange your farm. With Muhammad, he will give you a corner lot in the heaven. What do you say? Have you ever heard of a, a scam like this before? The poor guy, he went to his wife. He said, I exchanged my farm of trees with the Prophet of Allah. <laughs> what? And actually, this is why the verse, the one we showed you about Allah giving Allah alone, this is what Muhammad did to this poor guy. 
He took his farm. What Muhammad will do with the farm? This is what happened when you follow a scammer. As simple as that. Anyway, I think we have enough for today. Uh, please subscribe to this account. And I am thinking actually to make this, to separate the topic of the two accounts, that one we speak maybe about the Bible or this one, we will see which one. And like we will make one, one about Islam and one about to answer about Christianity. All right. And uh, let us hope that we will be able to survive with YouTube because it's obvious, you know, they will not leave us alone for we are doing a major harm to the cult of Islam. This is why we open many accounts and we have too many in order you know, we don't care really about which account. We care about doing the service. It doesn't matter. Now, Christmas is coming, and soon we will have like, a, let us say, some private uh, uh, join for those who consider them as a family. Um, maybe I will not make it open to everybody because we don't want people to annoy us. It's going to be like a family thing. And people they can share whatever they want so we will see how we will do it and we will update you about when we are going to do that mostly in the christmas day or maybe the day before i want to say thank you for being here may the lord bless you and until we see you again we praise the lord for he gave us what we have for he informed us so we know for he taught us so we will not be deceived for he is with us so we will not be weak. We praise the Lord that we love the Muslims. We are not hateful. And we will not hate them. Even with all the violence this cult do. We believe they are victims and they need help. More than people need to be punished. And we will leave punishment to the one who created people. The one who do punish people for their evil. Everyone who do evil will be punished. Doesn't matter what your evil is. It's about religion or something else. Always your evil will come back to you. It doesn't matter what's your name. The Lord, he said, from their fruit, you shall know them. If your fruits are evil, regardless if your name is a Christian or Muhammad or Raja or whatever it is, he will recognize you by your fruits. So time will come and by fruit you will be called and you will pay for it or you will be rewarded God is good and with the good God we leave you in peace thank you very much for being here may the Lord bless you take care